Welcome to Lecture Online, and here I'm going to do the same problem I did in the previous video, but instead of using pole coordinates, we're going to use the x and y coordinates. And so here again, we have an infinite sheet of charge, and of course it goes on infinitely in both the x and the y direction. And we want to know what the electric field strength is at some distance away from the sheet. So I picked a point directly perpendicular away from this point right there, and we want to know what the electric field strength is at that location. So what we did was we picked an arbitrary small little area element called the dA, and that's going to be equal to dx times dy. So the width here is dx and the height is dy. I'm assuming the positive x direction in this direction, positive y direction in this direction, positive z direction out away from the, um, from the uh, sheet of charge. And again, it doesn't matter which way we define a positive or negative. This just makes it easier to see the drawing, and that's why I picked it that way. All right, the dq will be equal to the charge density, which is charge per unit area, times the area of that element. So the small amount of charge dq on there will be the sigma times dA, and dA is dx times dy. So this is the beginning. Now, we're going to take this point right there and draw a line directly to the point of interest, and that will be the distance r away from the element dq. Notice that this distance right here, let's call it z, and then this distance right here, this distance here, that would be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, because this is x, this is y, so the hypotenuse of that would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two legs. So now you can see that we have this triangle that kind of lays, uh, that leans backwards like that. So the height is this way, here's the hypotenuse, and there is z. So it's not straight up, it's kind of leaning towards that direction. All right, now, what is the electric field at this location due to this charge right there? Well, it will be in this direction. This will be my dE, and that dE will be equal to k times the charge that causes it divided by the distance squared, which is r squared. Now notice that I want to know the electric field in the z direction. And if I draw this correctly, you can see that the perpendicular component to the plane would be this, and the parallel component to the plane will be that. And this here can be called dE in the z direction, which will be equal to dE times, and if you call this the angle theta, times the cosine of theta like that. Why do I care about this component right here? Is because as I integrate, uh, all the way up and down like this. Notice that when I take this element that come down here, I'll have this component in the opposite direction, same magnitude, and they will cancel each other out. For every uh, dq here along this line, I'm going to have a dq on the other side that will cancel that out. And for every dq in this direction, I'll have a dq in that direction that will cancel out. So this component will simply cancel out as I integrate across the sheet, and this component will remain, will always be dE in the z direction. As the angle theta changes, of course, dEz will change as well. Now, notice that the cosine of theta, this is the same theta as this theta right there, the cosine of theta can be defined as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, so I can write this as z over r. So that means I can write dE in the z direction as dE, which is of course defined over here, times the ratio of the hypotenuse, uh, not the hypotenuse, but the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is z over r. So that is equal to k dq over r squared times z over r. And of course, remember what r is equal to here. r is the hypotenuse of this triangle. The leg over here is this quantity. The leg over here is z. So I know that r is equal to the square root of this quantity plus this quantity, or r squared is equal to this quantity squared plus this quantity squared. So what it comes down to then is that <clears throat> This is equal to, to C. let me define R. So R is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So R squared will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's the easiest way to see it. And then, of course, R cubed will be this quantity cubed, which makes dEz equal to k times dq. Now what is dq equal to? Let me replace dq with what dq is equal to, which is this right here, which is sigma times dx times dy times z, the whole thing divided by r cubed, and since r is equal to that, we end up with x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. So now we have a really good representation of the z component 
of the electric field caused by this small little dq right there. So what we need to do now is we need to integrate it two ways. We first need to integrate it in the, <clears throat> in the x direction, and then we have to integrate in the y direction. It doesn't really matter which direction we pick first, you'll end up with the same, same thing no matter what. So let's first integrate it across the x direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate it to the left and to the right, like this. So now we'll have a strip of that infinite plane. We'll integrate all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. All right, so what will that look like? So we can now say so that E in the z direction caused by the x integration first. So I'll just write it as z uh, caused by integrating in the x direction. That's going to be equal to the integral of the dezs that we obtained from here. And so that will be equal to the integral of k sigma dx dy times z all divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. Now, since we're going to integrate from x, and now notice what we're going to do is we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals infinity and then double that because that way it makes it a little bit easier working with the zero limit. So instead of going from minus infinity to positive infinity, since going from here to positive infinity and doubling it, it's the same as integrating over the whole distance, I then need to put a 2 in front of it like that. So I do that by starting with the x limit. Since I'm integrating over the x direction, everything else will then be a constant. dy will be constant, z will be constant, the y and the z all will be constant, x is the only variable. So what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is I'm going to take the y squared plus z squared and I'm going to make that into an a squared. So I'm going to do a substitution, let a squared, that's a terrible looking, squared a squared equals x squared plus y squared, like that, and move everything out of the integral sign, so this is going to be equal to 2 k sigma dy and z and then integrate that from 0 to infinity and we're going to have a dx in the numerator and in the denominator we're going to have an oh not an x square oh yeah yeah we are going to have uh, or I can just take y square plus z square call that an a square plus x square to the 3 halves power so now you need to know how to integrate that since we don't have a ready differential, there's actually a really nice integral that works. So this is going to be equal to, we still have 2k sigma dy times z times, this integral right here will be equal to x divided by a squared times the quantity a squared plus x squared to the one half power. And we're going to evaluate that from zero to infinity. Now, the way that's done is that uses trigonometry substitution, but I don't want to go through that detail. There will be a different video. But here we simply know that this is the integral, uh, this is the result of this integral right here. So now we just have to evaluate it. Notice when we plug in the lower limit, plug in 0 for x, you get 0 in the numerator, so that drops off. So we only get uh, a result when we plug in the upper limit. So let's do that. Let's plug in the upper limit. And when we plug in the upper limit, we get, so this is still the electric field in the z direction due to integrating across the x variable. So we have e in the z direction caused by integrating across the x variable is equal to, so we have 2k sigma dy times z, and then we're going to plug in the upper limit, so we'll get infinity divided by a squared times a squared plus infinity squared to the one-half power. Now, this is an interesting result. Notice what we get here. We have an infinity in the numerator, and in the denominator we have infinity squared plus a squared to the one-half power. Now, remember that infinity squared plus a squared, that's the same as infinity squared, so we don't have to worry about the a squared. We can just ignore it at that point. And infinity squared to the one-half power is simply infinity, and infinity divided by infinity is 1, so we get 1 over a squared. So this ends up being 2k sigma dy z over a squared. And remember what a squared was equal to, it was equal to x squared plus y squared. So this now becomes 2k sigma dy times z over uh, x squared plus y squared. Oh, nope, x squared plus y squared. No, that wasn't x squared plus y squared. I made a wrong 
substitution, what I wanted to do here is make it y squared plus z squared. So make it z squared here. See, what I wanted to do is since x was the variable, I wanted to get rid of the y and the z, so I want to replace y and z squared by a squared. That's what I did. And so I need z squared plus y squared. And when I substitute back in, this should be z squared plus y squared. Much better. All right. Now, I want to integrate it in the other direction. So I'm going to integrate this in the y direction now. So now y becomes the variable. z is still a constant. So now if I want to find e total, that is equal to the integral of ez in the x direction. But now I'm going to integrate from y equals negative infinity to y equals positive infinity. Or if I take the right limit, I can go from 0 to infinity and just double the integral. So this can be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. I'm going to do it twice, put a 2 there. I have a 2k sigma z times dy over z squared plus y squared. All right, notice that in the numerator, 2k sigma z are all constant. They can come outside the integral sign, so this is equal to 4k sigma z times the integral from 0 to infinity of dy over z squared plus y squared. And if you integrate that, you get the following. This is equal to 4k sigma z times, this would be, uh, let's see here, 1 over uh, z times the arctangent of y over z. In, in, um, evaluate from 0 to infinity. All right, so remember here that uh, zero, uh, that y is the variable. So when we plug in the lower limit, the, the arctangent of zero gives me zero because when the ratio, remember, if you take a look at it, so here's a triangle, for example. Uh, there's the theta, and the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So when the angle is zero, the opposite will be zero. So therefore, when the angle is zero, or the ratio is zero, the angle will be zero. So I get zero when I plug in zero, but when I plug in infinity, what do I get? When infinity, well, that means that the opposite side is infinite compared to the adjacent side. That means at that point, the angle will be 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. So when I plug in infinity, the arctangent of infinity will be pi over 2. So this is equal to 4k sigma z times 1 over z times, when I plug in the upper limit, I get uh, pi over 2, and when I plug in the lower limit, I get 0. So I simply end up with pi over 2. All right, almost done. Notice now that the z's cancel out, and this 2 cancels out that 2, uh, that 4 becomes a 2. And remember that k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So this would be, in the numerator, I get 2 sigma pi. In the denominator, I get 4 pi epsilon sub naught. And the pi's cancel out. And this 2 becomes a 1, that 4 becomes a 2, and finally I can say that this is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon sub naught, which is the exact same answer we got with the previous video when we used uh, rings instead of x, dx times dy. So the total electric field will be equal to this, or if you want to put it in vector format, you can then say that the vector format E is equal to the magnitude, which is sigma divided by 2 epsilon sub naught times the direction, which is in the z direction, and so we write it like a vector quantity like that. And that's how you do that. Again, you take a small little element, call it dA, dx times dy. So dQ is simply sigma times dA, which is sigma times dx dy. We then find the electric field caused at this location due to the small dQ right here. Notice that electric field direction is in this direction. We just want the perpendicular component because this component will cancel out as you integrate up and down and left and right. So this will cancel out. You're just left with this component right here. You then integrate over that component first in the x direction. So you have the infinite line charge at that distance away from this point right here. And so when you do that, you get this result over here. That's the, that is the electric field caused by line charge. Then you in integrate again in the y direction. So you do the second integral, and then you get finally the result, which is the exact same results we got when we did the little ringlets. So that's how we find the electric field at a distance z away from an infinite plane. And again, let me point out to you that there's no dependency on the distance away from the plane. 
which means you can be close, you can be far away, the electric field strength will always be the same in front of an infinite plane. That's how we do that.